Hey Sugar Geeks, Liz here. Today I'm gonna show you how to make those trendy breakable hearts that you're seeing all over social media. Ready? One, two, three. It's coming up next on the Sugar Geek Show. So I see a lot of trends come and go seemingly every week. And some of them I like and some of them I don't like. And I actually really like the breakable heart trend. You basically get to make a pinata of sorts out of solid chocolate, fill it with candy or cake or whatever you want, and then you smash it with a hammer. It's like the, the dessert of 2020, just like take out your aggressions on your dessert. <laughs> So the first thing we need to do is melt down our chocolate. We're gonna be using a ton of white chocolate for this, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that using the traditional seeding method. The first thing we're gonna do is melt our chocolate down over a double boiler or a bain-marie, and basically all that is is a pot with about two inches of boiling water and a bowl, that's a heat-proof bowl, over the top of that, and the bowl has to be larger than the pot so that you don't have steam that's kinda of like going into the chocolate. Water plus chocolate doesn't mix. <laughs> The only type of chocolate you have to worry about tempering is real chocolate. So chocolate that has cocoa butter in it, and you would want to temper chocolate with the seeding method if you have to temper a large amount of chocolate and you don't wanna like, you know, chop tons and tons of like shredded chocolate. The alternative to the seeding method is tempering in the microwave, which is great for small amounts of chocolate, and you can learn how to do that here. And then we're going to melt that chocolate to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the same for white chocolate, dark chocolate, or milk chocolate. We're heating our chocolate to 113 degrees because that breaks down all of the existing crystals and then we're gonna build them back up with only good crystals. Once your chocolate has reached 113 degrees, we're gonna take it off of the water. Make sure you dry the bottom of the bowl with a paper towel so we don't get any water in there. And then we're gonna transfer that chocolate into another bowl that's going to immediately bring the temperature down at least 10 degrees, save us some time. Tempering just means we're controlling the temperature of the chocolate. So we're making sure that it reaches certain temperatures so that we have the strongest, most beautiful, shiny chocolate ever. So now we're gonna take our chopped chocolate. This has to be chopped chocolate because we want it to melt very quickly. And we're gonna just keep adding chocolate and stirring to bring the temperature of the chocolate all the way down to 90 degrees. Stirring is really important to creating those crystals. So at 90 degrees, you should see just like a couple of bits of chocolate still left in there that are not quite melted. Just keep stirring until they are melted. We're gonna bring that all the way down to 84 degrees. So now that we're at the lowest temperature, this is where things will change depending on the type of chocolate you're using. If you're using milk chocolate, you wanna heat it up to 86 degrees and that's at the optimal working temperature. If you're working with white chocolate, you wanna bring that up to 88 degrees and that's gonna be the optimal working temperature. And if you're working with semi-sweet or dark, you wanna bring that up to no higher than 90 degrees. This is important to make sure that your chocolate stays in temper. So now we think our chocolate's tempered, right? We're gonna test it. Take a little bit of your chocolate, put it onto some parchment paper and put that in the freezer for about five minutes. Then we're going to give it a snap. And if it snaps, it's tempered. If it bends or it seems soft, it's not quite tempered and you need to heat your chocolate back up to 90 degrees, add a little bit more chocolate and keep stirring and then do your test again. As you're using your tempered chocolate, of course it's gonna cool down naturally, that's very normal. You can always just put it back onto the double boiler or into the microwave for very, very short amounts of time so that you can get it to that workable temperature again. Okay, so now that our chocolate is tempered, we're gonna go ahead and pour that into our geometric heart mold. You could really use any type of mold for this. You could do breakable spheres, you could do breakable, I don't know, what are mold shapes? <laughs> and I'm gonna just add maybe like a quarter of a cup. And then I'm just gonna kind of roll this around to try and get into all the little crevices, make a nice coat. You can add more if you need to. This is just the first coat, so don't stress too much. I mean, you shouldn't stress at all. This shouldn't be stressful. But if you're like me, you probably just stress for no reason. <laughs> a little bit more. I should mention that this chocolate is at 82 degrees, so when it's at 88, I feel like it's a little bit too liquidy and it gets really hard to actually build up that wall. So depending on how liquid your chocolate is, you might wanna increase or decrease the temperature up to 88 degrees for white chocolate. Okay, so I just have this one spot where I can't quite get some up there. And this little peak right in the middle always wants to kind of be thin. 
So what we don't want to do now is just like let this, you know, cool down sitting like this because it's super thick. Like all that chocolate's just going to be hanging out at the bottom. So I'm just going to dump out the excess, turn it carefully. It's kind of a floppy heart here. Give it a little shake. Just like if we were doing hot chocolate bombs. And now I'm going to clean up the edges. And then I'm just going to turn this upside down onto some parchment paper here. And uh, you can pop this into the freezer for about five or 10 minutes just to help set it up. Okay, so I have some leftover tempered um, semi-sweet chocolate. I'm just gonna chop that and reuse it using the microwave tempering method. And this is gonna be the second layer of chocolate in our breakable heart because we're baking it to be kind of like chocolate bark. Because, you know, to me it doesn't make sense. I've seen these, these breakable hearts where it's this thick layer of like white chocolate and like what's the point of it? Are you supposed to eat it? You know, like you want it to taste good, right? So we're gonna use good quality white chocolate, good quality dark chocolate. And then we're going to layer that up, add some toppings. It's gonna look pretty and taste delicious. All right, so here is our chocolate heart. It's all set up. So I don't wanna use all of this chocolate because I gotta save some for the other heart. And you could use a spoon, whatever you want, to kind of just brush this around. I mean, you could, you could still like kind of shake it like we did before, but for whatever reason, I just feel like it doesn't smooth as much. Make sure your edges are not too thin. You can build those up with your paintbrush a little bit. Give them some extra TLC. We want to kind of smooth this out as fast as we can because once it starts hardening, you know, it's going to want to get really thick in that area. And then um, when you do your second heart, your chocolate may have start to be getting thicker in the bowl. So you can just heat that up for like five seconds. So it's back at 90 degrees for, you know, semi-sweet and dark chocolate. If you're using milk chocolate, you don't want to go above 86. I don't want this to be too thick. So I'm going to scoop out any extra chocolate. Cool. That looks so yummy. So I just got this uh, geometric heart mold on Amazon. You can, it's actually a mousse cake mold, but I've used it for mirror glaze cakes. I've used it for chocolate. You can even make ice cream cakes with this. So it's a great little mold to have. And if you just uh, search for mousse cake mold, you'll find all kinds of different shapes. I'll put the link to this exact mold in the description below. Now we just have to do the other side. So I'm gonna put this into the freezer for 10 minutes. And then we're gonna start melting down our gold drip, get all of our toppings, our chocolate covered strawberries or candies or whatever you wanna use for the inside of your breakable heart mold. If you wanna know how to make the best chocolate covered strawberries ever, you can check out this video right here. When you're all done with your chocolate, go ahead and pour that onto a piece of plastic wrap, let it harden up, and then you have tempered chocolate ready to go for your next application. All right, so it's time to put our breakable heart together. I have a plate here that I have microwaved for one minute to kind of make it a little bit warm, and that's just gonna help us refine our edges. I'm gonna take this carefully out of our mold by just sort of loosening around the edges. This is always the nerve wracking part. Just put all this work into it. Turn this upside down and just lift up so I'm not putting any pressure. Ta da! So this is the top. It's over there. Okay, and then here's the bottom. So this one I made uh, yesterday and it's a little bit lighter in color because I added white food coloring to the melted chocolate um, and I was working on another project, but I forgot to do that for this one. So you can see the difference between using a uh, white food coloring and no food coloring. This is the bottom though, nobody's gonna see that. So what I'm gonna do now is take my little plate, carefully put this guy on it and we're just gonna refine those edges a little bit. So it's nice and flat. Okay, there we go, we have nice flat edges. If you have hot hands, this might be the time that you put on some gloves so you don't accidentally put any ugly fingerprints on your, your hearts. 
Okay. Nice and flat. So now I'm gonna put a few little conversation hearts in the bottom. You could use sprinkles. You could use more chocolates if you want. It's just kind of like filler to make it look cute. And now I'm going to just arrange these in there. You can do it kind of however you want. As many as you could fit in there, I guess. I'm gonna try and get two of each. It's so cute. You guys might be like, conversation hearts, like who eats those? My daughter, okay? She loves conversation hearts and this is for her. And then we put the lid on top, like this. It's own little edible candy heart box. Now, I would seal this, but I have to take pictures of the inside of this later. So just pretend like we sealed it. <laughs> you just put like a little bead of chocolate on there, melted chocolate, or you could even just melt a little bit more on the plate and then just seal those two together. So it's like an actual box. And then we're gonna decorate it. So I'm gonna use this gold easy drip. I'll put this, all these links and everything to I'm using in the blog post, or you can just look in the description below for it. It's great though, cause it's already gold. You don't have to paint it and you can just drizzle it over the top. So it's gonna add to our chocolate bark action. I'm gonna add a few sprinkles. And I'm gonna add a little bit of crumbled freeze-dried strawberry. Just like if we were making real chocolate bark, right? And you could put this over really the whole surface, but I just think it looks kind of cute with it just off to the side. A couple more drips here and there. And if you didn't have this, you could literally just use melted chocolate. Okay, add like a couple little gold balls. Okay, I'm gonna put this into the fridge to set up and then we get to break our breakable heart. Don't go break out my heart, I could it if I tried. <laughs> Every time I see somebody break one of these hearts, they always use these really dinky uh, like wooden mallets. Not me, I've got the big guns out. I'm using the meat tenderizer so we can really do some damage. This is one hit, we're just gonna go for it. Ready? One, two, three. So that's it guys, that is how you make your very own chocolate breakable heart. So go out there and break some hearts. <laughs> I'm Liz Merrick and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Everybody's like, oh Liz, come on. I'm like, I know, I know, okay. <laughs>